certain decisions. So I think in the book of Acts, these disciples use some similar processes to make their decision. They turn to scripture when it said, for it is written in the book of Psalms. Peter was referring back to what it said in scripture. And then they looked at the tradition of the church. And as Peter said, friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit through David foretold. So the traditions of David, King David, and what he foretold were now being uh, coming into the time. Then um, uh, with reason, they looked at the qualifi qualifications of those people who were recommended and said, and quote, one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us. So their reasoning said, we need to pick someone who's been on this whole journey so they understand what all of us have uh, experienced. The good news is that even if we have done all the discernment and we still feel stuck, even if we choose the wrong thing, we're never beyond God's redeeming grace. I am the poster child for resisting. I have my own very good reasons, of course, why I resist. But it was in seminary that I realized this was a pattern that was wasting my time and energy. I just needed to get it together. I did not want to go on a cross-cultural experience. I did not want to pay money to spend two to three weeks away from my family in Ghana or Korea or with impoverished people in the mountains of Colorado or in Cuba. But it was required. From the beginning of going for my master's, I knew it was required. So I procrastinated and resisted and procrastinated and resist. You know, pro procrastination and resistance go together. I practiced, pro procrastinated until my last semester, and I had to make a decision because I had to go or I couldn't graduate. So I chose to go to Cuba. The reason I chose that was because it was only two weeks and the others were three weeks. So that was my reasoning. Of course, I learned so much and it transformed me. And I'm so glad that God sent me to that beautiful country with those beautiful people. I never thought I had a problem making decisions, but in resisting, I, and I was making a decision, the decision not to make a decision. And I didn't give up on resistance easily. Gradually, as I grew through the years, <laughs> I would notice the times I was resisting and was able to pull myself out of it, mostly. Unfortunately for me, our new district superintendent knows me very well. In fact, she was the one who pointed out to me my resistance to going to Cuba. Well, now that she's DS, I really can't hide, even in the belly of a whale. But speaking of whale, Jonah made all the wrong decisions. He deliberately disobeyed God. Yet by the end of the story, he ended up exactly where God wanted him to be. Jonah had no process, just his feelings. His plan was to stay away from Nineveh because they were so sinful in that community, in that town. 
He didn't want to be God's messenger of destruction. God was sending Jonah to tell the people, um, repent or you're going to be destroyed. And then when they did repent, Jonah didn't want to be the messenger of God's grace either. He thought they should be punished. So Jonah tried to flee Nineveh in a boat, and God rocked the boat. Jonah asked to be thrown over into the water, and he believed that he should be punished because he got in the boat and that caused the, the waters to rage. So eventually he was thrown over into the waters, and then we know the rest of the story, right? The big fish swallows Jonah. Jonah has a conversation in the fish with God. Then the big fish spews him out onto Nineveh's shore. And Jonah becomes God's messenger, ending up where God wanted him to be in the first place. It often can feel like we're making decisions in a vacuum. Like, how do I do this? We're, but we're not alone. We're not alone. God has given you the tools. The tools you need to make the decisions that keep you up at night. We don't want to toss and turn anymore, so we will use God's tools. We stand within God's amazing grace. Yet some decisions are more consequential than others, like renting a video, going to Cuba. It did take me more than an hour to decide to go to Cuba, but you know what I mean. Talk to someone. Read your scripture. Think about the experience you've had. Pray, and then decide. God's got you. Do not be afraid. So lastly, have you decided to follow Jesus? Do you, have you decided that life alone is not working for you? Do you need a way to find more meaning in your life? God's got you. If only you would decide to follow Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ who took away your sin. Because of that, we, you, are forgiven. God is a loving God. God is a peace-giving God, and God is a healing God. Do you want more of these things in your life? Then you need to decide to follow Jesus. Follow Jesus or turn away from God and God's love. Thanks be to God. Amen. So let us rise and sing hymn number 2129 in the black hymnal or on the screen, I have decided to follow Jesus. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, thank you, AJ. <laughs> I tell AJ to do things and then I forget. Um, this morning at the gazebo service, Greg got this on his phone. And he showed it to me and said, this is like what you were preaching. So at the top, there's God, my plan, straight line across. God's plan. That's more like what Jonah went through, right? God's plan. Sometimes God doesn't do things the way we think he should. But God has a perfect plan for your life. Thanks be to God. All right. Let us sing, I have decided to follow Jesus.
Thank you. You may be seated. Someone once said, you can tell what is most important to a person by the way they spend their time and how they spend their money. Every day we have opportunities to witness to our faith in Christ and be participants in the work of God's kingdom. The moment, this moment, is another opportunity where we can use the gifts that God has given us to support the ministry of the church and the building of God's kingdom through our tithes and offerings. Please join me on the offering prayer. Gracious, Gracious God, God, we thank you for pouring your blessings out upon all your children. Bless these gifts that are freely given, that they might bring hope to the hopeless and peace to those who are tossing and turning with uncertainty. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, Doris, again, is our shepherd. I think she's our head shepherd. And she takes all the prayer requests that she gets throughout the week. And last week, what happened? We didn't have any new prayer requests. Well, this week, we don't have any new prayer requests. So everyone must be praying on their own, and uh, we're grateful that there aren't any tragedies or challenges too much this week. But I will lift up a few that we've been praying for. I lift up Bill Sauerwald and Peter Kachanik. They both are dealing with their cancer. And I lift up um, Luz and Robert Young's niece, Carla Rivera. She's also dealing with cancer, will have some surgery and has procedures before that. So we ask you to pray for her. And we continue to pray for um, those who are ill and stay home and we're grateful if they are there and have opportunity to see us online. But lastly, I remind you that we have been praying for Jennifer Scharfetter. Um, she had, uh, there was a tree uh, in her yard, I guess, and it, it got knocked over in the storm. It fell on her car, it hit an electric wire and it caught on fire and the car caught on fire and her siding melted <clears throat> and then she happened to touch something and got a charge from the electricity so she's dealing emotionally and physically with all that has happened and because every Sunday we have communion the first Sunday of the month you have little envelopes that say communion offering and because of those offerings, which go into the pastor's discretionary fund, I was able to make a contribution to Jennifer from that account. Marie Harvey took that and took some food to Jennifer, and she was so thankful. So she sent this card and the letter. Oh, oh here it is and asked if I would read it in church. Dear Pastor Linda and my church family, thank you so much for your prayers. Thank you for the gift of food and the monetary gift. It is going to help with my bills that are piling up. I really appreciate my church family and for all the help you have given me. This is a very hard trial but God has saved me and my family. I keep hearing the praise team singing in my head, God will take care of you, and it brings me peace and hope. 
I hope this trial, well, God will make things much better for me than I could imagine. He has already done it through my church family's gifts. I hope this trial that I'm going through will show everyone around me that God is good all the time. Even in our darkest moments, God will take care of all of us. Just pray, believe, and ask him and Jesus for help. He is always there, waiting to help. Just take, just take hold of his hand. Let us praise God and thank him for the gifts he has given us. God bless all of you. Sincerely, Jennifer. What a story of faith. What a witness to God's uh, blessings in her life and not living in fear. So uh, we thank you, Jennifer, for your words. So let us go now to our time of prayer. Gracious God, uh, we have, I have lifted up some people who are not feeling well or who are challenged with their physical health, physical health. And today we lift up to you those who are on our hearts at this time. God, we ask that you bring your healing touch to those people and to bring your wisdom to those who are caring for them. And today, God, we lift those who are challenged with mental dis-ease. Walk beside them and help them to find the way to get help. And we ask that you bless our world, that you bring healing to our land, to the people, and peace to those who think that war is the best way. So God, we have endless possibilities and often overwhelmed by the choices that are before us. When everything else fails, you are still God. Help us to put our trust in you, in your redeeming love, in your ever-present grace, that we can go in the direction that you call us. God, we give you thanks for all of our blessings, and we pray all this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Just a few short announcements. Our uh, pantry has reduced its inventory so much by uh, the amount of people we're serving that we are actually going to get a second delivery of food, for which I am very grateful. Uh, we're going to get it Wednesday morning, sometime between 7 in the morning and 8.30. But uh, it will help the pantry out immensely. I don't know if anyone's been downstairs, but if you look around, there is not a lot down there. So we're grateful for this extra delivery. Tomorrow night, drive through dinner. If you haven't made a reservation yet, please call the church office. Or I don't know if there's a sign-up sheet out there. There is. There's a sign-up sheet by the front door if you'd like to sign up. It's not too late. And lastly, the United Methodist Women are going to be meeting September 11th after church. Uh, Doris, in the back building? Are we? 
in the back building. All right, well, uh, if you'd like to uh, come out and see what it's all about, we'd love to have some new people come out. Thank you. Have a blessed day. Thank you, Linda, and thank to, thanks to all of those who volunteer at the pantry and those who bring food. It's just so appreciated. But the volunteers are always steadfast, so we give God thanks for all of you. So if you're able and willing, please rise to receive this benediction. Resist or pray to God. Resist or read scripture. Resist or follow Jesus Christ. Go from this place deciding to follow Christ. And may your day be filled with love and joy and peace. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll take it. Oh, no, the clock truck was there. I brought two waters up because I thought I.